Hey folks, Matt from Murder the Image.com. It's got a viewer email, interesting email, uh, questioning what brand is worth investing in. This comes in to us from Peter, and the heading is What brand do you feel is worth investing in? Peter says, Hello from Sweden. I'm about to buy my first camera and are currently choosing between a Sony A6500, 6300, the Fuji XT20, and might even go for a Canon M50. Although, I feel Canon isn't bringing anything new or important for me to consider when it comes to video quality and lenses. My priorities are good quality in 1080, which leads to great, uh, which leads to quality lenses that are not crazy expensive. We'll also do lots of photos, but seems to me these cameras will do fine, um, maybe uh, plus to the Fuji. So, as it is now, I think the X-T20 is ahead, but it might lack in AF. Canon doesn't bring anything to the table, and lastly, Sony is great with good low light, but with expensive glass. What brand do you feel is the most future-proof at the moment? Sorry for the weird question, but I have a really hard time choosing. Keep on with the great videos and best wishes, Peter. Well, thanks very much, Peter, and an interesting question, albeit a little bit of a hot potato because obviously um, we're going to have, you know, it's like the Ford Chevy argument. You're going to have people riling up behind their brand on this one. I'm looking here... And I, I thought about the, the, the cameras you're looking at. The X-T20 is a great choice. I love that camera. Do I have it sitting here? No, I don't at the moment. Uh, hang on one sec. Okay, so here's the X-T20. Beautiful little camera. We have the flip-up screen. Uh, on here, we've got the 50 F2. Beautiful little lens. Love that for a portrait lens. And, of course, what I brought also to include in the discussion is the 18-55 to 55, uh, 28 to 4, which is probably the best kit lens ever made, in my opinion. Um, beautiful construction, metal body, very smooth zoom and focus ring. Uh, just a beautiful lens for a kit lens. I don't think anybody can top that. So uh, I heavily recommend the X-T20. I think that's a very good choice. Your point about lacking in AF, Fuji has um, made some advances, advances in the autofocus system uh, and really refined it. And in a lot of ways, I think they're not given enough credit for it right now. I would say that Fuji is right up there, uh, right on the heels of Canon Dual Pixel AF and on this of Sony's autofocus system for video. Uh, and it's it's you know some of the tweaks you can make and the refinements to set it up the way you want it to shoot are truly amazing with the Fuji. So I, I think you would find that you are quite happy with the X-T20's AF. Uh, the Sony, let's discuss the A6300 and the A6500. Um, they might be the most future-proof bodies, but there is some negatives there in the sense of one of the things I'm not a big fan of with the Sonys and a lot of people aren't is they're like little brick computers. They're not like nice functioning cameras so much. They don't, they don't, it's like a computer technician put them together instead of a photographer. The menus are not very uh, friendly, user-centric. As far as a, for a photographer, it's more like looking through a computer. A lot of people don't like the menus on a Sony. And then the other big problem is, as you pointed out, the cost of the lenses. To get into decent lenses, uh, like for instance, these with the Fuji or, you know, Canon has lots of mid-grade and lower-end lenses that are still decent quality. So does Nikon. We just don't see that in the Sony. The Sony is too expensive to get into decent lenses. The kit lens that comes with the 63 and the 65, not a very good lens. I wouldn't recommend it. You really got to step up in cash, and that makes the Sony system more expensive, in my opinion, and in quite a few other people's opinion. The other thing is, is that Sony hasn't built up a really good, strong um, comfort level with their customer support and their quality control. In other words, we've seen some fairly, um, actually, big-name people online talking about how they wanted to they, they got into the sony system and then when they have a problem with it, it was like pulling teeth to get customer support to get warranty repairs and it just i don't have that warm fuzzy feeling about investing that kind of money into a system where i think i'm going to be let down um with the customer support as far as warranty and and, and the the filling of the warranty and satisfying you if you have a problem. These are things that concern me about the Sony system and why myself, I have held off buying into it and why I would still have concerns buying into it. May not be a problem for you. A lot of people still shoot Sony and quite like it, but there are people that have had issues in this area, so I want to bring it up. And certainly, as I said, 
as I've said in many videos, the lens is, is a big thing for me, just on a price point. Um, I guess the next point to consider is, um, well, let me address the Canon M50, uh, lastly, of the, of the choices you made. The M50 is a great camera. Uh, I really like it. It's small. It's lightweight. Uh, it does have 4K, although probably not, uh, I shouldn't even say probably, the 4K in it is not as good a quality as the competition. You're going to get better 4K with the Sonys or with the Fuji. However, it's decent. It's usable. It's okay. Um, and it's a nice offering at a good price. And that's the strength of it from Canon there. It allows you to use all the great Canon lenses, especially if you get the adapter. So uh, I think that's something to consider as well. The um, big thing I think that I want to throw back at you is what do you like best? Have you been in the store? Have you got your hands on these cameras, played with them? Um, because it's a lot to that of how you like it, how the com camera operates, how you like the ergonomics of the camera, uh, the fit and finish, the build, all of that factors in and should factor into your decision. So um, I'm not sure. It seems like you're leaning towards the X-T20, which I certainly don't have a problem with and I think you'd be very happy with. Um, so I would, uh, if that's the case, I would encourage you to um, to go ahead with an XT20, um, the Sony myself I would I would probably go with the Fuji or the Canon M50 over that simply for the reasons I've already discussed, um, and then it also comes down to how much video do you do and how much you can do versus photos with the um, Fuji and with the M50 you're going to be set for both of those so both a good option um, the Sony again some of the problems. Uh, with battery overheating, with the lack of lenses and things like this might factor in and make it, you know, I guess that's the the last of my, what I would buy out of the choices you're looking at. I would go with either the M50 or with the Fuji. Um, but two hard decisions because you're buying into a nice Canon system uh, with a very nice camera, a very nice price camera, but you're also buying into a really nice Fuji system with some fantastic lenses and some excellent image quality and excellent video uh, quality and abilities. So let's throw it back to our viewers. What would you do in Peter's, um, in Peter's uh, conundrum or his buying situation here? Would you go with the Sony? Do you disagree with me and you would get a Sony A63 or A65? Would you go with the Fuji X-T20? Would you go with the Canon M50? What would you get and why? Leave uh, your opinion in the comments below. Let us know what you would do and why. Let's help out Peter. Always great to hear feedback from you guys uh, and help our viewers that are asking questions about what to buy get a little bit more um, nuanced or more opinions in before they make their decision. Other things to consider. Thanks for your question, Peter. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.